How you doing, folks? Well, it's time to get stuck back into the TDI engine in this T3 van behind me here. And let's try and find out why the hell it's not performing right. The fuel economy is terrible. I'm getting at most 30 miles to the gallon. It's underpowered and I'm just not happy. So let's see if we can figure out what's wrong with it. <laughs> Just by way of a bit of a backstory here, since I installed the AHU TDI engine that's down beside me here, I have been underwhelmed by the performance of it, plus the fact that it's doing 30 miles to the gallon. To tell you the truth, if I'd known it was going to be this bad, I wouldn't have bothered putting the um, AHU engine in, I would have just left it with the AAZ that was in it before. But anyway, it's in now, so I may as well get it working. The thing is, is I put larger injectors in it, and... Um, yeah, there's just something wrong with it, to be honest with you. I mean, it's only putting out 90 horsepower. With the larger injectors, it should be, uh, the larger injectors and the remap I got, it should be putting out at least 110. And as I said, it's burning a lot of diesel and it's hard to start in the mornings as well. Um, so it, it, it requires more cranking than it should. So yeah, um, I suppose the first thing to do is, uh, I have looked at all of the sensors and all the inputs and outputs of the ECU and everything looks normal there. So my belief is that it's something more organic, something more mechanical. And that's why I want to look at the camshaft timing and the injection pump timing properly. So aside from the basic hand tools that we're going to need to do this job, I also have this um, timing kit. Now you'll, we'll need one of these two and one of these pins. And I expected I was going to get a straight edge in it as well when I bought the kit, but didn't get one for some reason. But we will need a straight edge or something for the uh, end of the camshaft to keep that in place as well. Possibly that's what you're supposed to use as a straight edge, that little rod there. But anyway, I don't know. We'll figure it out as we go. So, yeah. Um, first things first is to take off the auxiliary belt because we're going to need to take the timing cover off and we're going to need to take the bottom pulley off. So the auxiliary belt is literally, it's just a case of uh, taking the tension off the tensioner. So I'm going to actually use a pipe wrench for that. Oh, another specialist tool I have is this, <laughs> such as it is. It's a socket actually welded into the spanner uh, just to make something quite shallow to go between the exhaust and the um, pulley to turn the engine over. That's literally all I made that uh, for. And it's, it's useful on the Golf as well and any other Volkswagen TDI engines. It's actually a three-quarter socket. Um, so... I'm going to grab the, the tensioner pulley here. I'm going to bend it back. And unhook the belt from the alternator and fish that out. Simple as. Comes out quite easily. Changing a belt in one of these is a handy little job. I did have to put an overrun pulley on this uh, alternator as well. Although I'm not entirely sure it's working properly. We'll have a look at that at a later stage. So the next thing to do is to take the timing belt cover off. Now I actually have a bolt going through it down here just to keep it in place. So I'm going to take that bolt out and then just clips and we'll uh, pull the cover off. And then we can look at getting our uh, lower pulley off. It's very important that you don't try and turn the engine over by turning either the fuel pump or the camshaft because what you'll do is you'll end up stretching the belt because the gearing is such that for every two rotations on the crankshaft pulley, you're only getting one up here. So you're getting a two to one gear, uh, uh, two to one gearing basically. So, you know, you're putting double the stress on the belt that it's supposed to take. So don't do that. Um, so yeah, next thing we need to do is I'm actually going to take off the um, the water bottle down here because it uh, it's just easier in a T25, T3 to do that just to give you better access to the side of the engine. It's literally uh, two bolts, 10 millimeter heads. Take the hose off and just keep the hose elevated and you won't uh, spill any water out of it. And just undo them and then uh, lift, the, uh, lift the bottle out of the way. You might need to lift it through the flap. Okay, next thing to do is to remove the bottom pulley. That is for uh, cap-headed bolts and uh, so we need, I think it's an 8mm Allen key. I'll double check and I'll let you know in a second. 6mm is actually what they are. So um, yeah, that's uh, just a case of uh, removing those four. You can see them there. 
There's one for example. Can uh, try on that one there. Now I tend to find it's useful in things like this just to keep the van in gear because <laughs> it will um, want to uh, rotate on you a little bit. So uh, once you get to compression, it shouldn't uh, it shouldn't be as inclined to rotate as this. But uh, anyway, let's. Uh, I'm going to free up my hands and take them out. It's very important with cap head bolts that you make sure that you clean any dirt out of them before you try and put the Allen key in, because otherwise you won't get the Allen key all the way in. You'll end up just wringing the head out. So just get a, a pick or a scribe or something like that and just clean the head out of it. It's time well spent in my mind. Same with screws, actually, for that matter. I always do that with a screw if I'm trying to remove it. Just give it a little clean first before you put the screwdriver near it. Make sure you have the right screwdriver. Of course it didn't go according to plan. It never goes according to plan. So what I had to do was take the exhaust off so that I could bang a socket into that one. Um, it, had it had already been guntered, so uh, yeah, it wasn't uh, it wasn't my doing in this instance. So anyway, right, look, at it's, it's out now. The pulley is now off, so there it is there. And the exhaust is off. Incidentally, the exhaust is actually, the pipe is broken going into it. I needed to fix it anyway, so it, uh, it was that much easier taking it off because of the fact that there was no pipe going onto it, essentially. Uh, TDI engine is not really that loud without the pipe on. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. There's a lot of stuff that needs to be fixed on this uh, van, I know that. So if you have a look in here now, you will see that the um, uh, crankshaft pulley for the timing belt is in there, but there's a plastic cover around it which needs to go next, and there is a bolt that is uh, holding that on. And that bolt is hiding in there so just need to remove that and uh, then the uh, the whole uh, time belt cover assembly will be out of our way and we can have a have a look at getting everything lined up and then we'll need to take the cam cover off there's actually two bolts holding it on the both m6s one is there and then there's another one inside there and Volkswagen in their infinite wisdom have decided that what I need to do now is I need to take off the water pump pulley that's just a pain in the ass Oh well, we'll get it off. It's not exactly difficult. Three cap head bolts. Of course, I'm saying it's not difficult, and what will end up happening is I'll strip one of the bolts out. Let's just say I got the uh, I got the cover out behind the pulley because uh, yeah, those uh, bolts are also stitched in as well. So uh, yeah, anyway, that's the problem with having put them on while the uh, the engine wasn't in the van. What happened was I used an impact gun to tighten them, and they're not coming out very easily. So it was my own silly fault, but uh, nevertheless, we shall continue on undeterred. So now I have access to the complete timing belt assembly. The next thing to do is to take off the rocker cover. So the rocker cover needs to come off, but before we take that off, we need to take our breather assembly off here. So there's a hose that goes down there. Take that off there. There's a jubilee clip holding that on and uh, that jubilee clip there. Take that off. Three bolts. That gives us access to our cam, so uh, I won't bore you with the details, I'll just get stuck in and I'll come back to you when I have it done. Okay, so that there is our camshaft, as if you didn't know. If you didn't know, you're probably unlikely to be doing this job in the first instance. So that's it there anyway, and in order to get close to top dead centre, what we need to do is we need to have it so both lobes on number one cylinder, which are these two here, okay, one is pointing kind of over that way and the other is pointing over that way, so they're both kind of as far away from uh, actually operating the valve as they can be, if you know what I mean. So uh, one would be a probably, um, I don't know, 200 degrees, you'd only be a 45 degrees or something like that. Anyway, right, that's neither here nor there. So what we need, what I'll do is I'll show you. So we're gonna rotate the engine until we're kind of in the ballpark and then we'll get our crankshaft locked up and then separate the pulley and get the camshaft locked up. So what I'm hoping I'm going to find is that the timing of the camshaft is miles out because at least that explains the performance issues I'm having with this engine. So yeah, let's, um, let's get that sorted out and uh, see how we go. Okay, so I'm going to start rotating the engine now in the normal direction of rotation until we get to the point where we're kind of close to top dead centre. With the exhaust off the van, it is definitely a lot easier to uh, uh, do this. So that's... It's coming up and it's going down on its in intake stroke now. That's why the intake valve is open, okay? So that's the, the second lobe in. Oh, 
All right, so we're getting close now. So let's just say roughly there, okay, for the moment. So you can see the intake valve isn't open, the exhaust valve isn't open. So we're, um, should be kind of halfway along the stroke. So if we go down to the other end of the camshaft, there is a slot that is basically in the side of the camshaft, or in the end of the camshaft. And what, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna get a straight edge into that slot that lines up with the top of the head, the ceiling surface of the uh, cam cover actually. And uh, that's basically how we're gonna set our cam timing. But in order to do that, we need to know we're at top dead center. And in order to get to top dead center, what we're going to use is we're going to use our crankshaft locking tool. So that's why I bought the crankshaft locking tool. So let's have a look and see how that goes on. Just once I'd like a job to go straight forward. The crankshaft locking tool is the wrong one I got. So yeah, I needed a, com a completely different type. And the ones I'm seeing have slotted holes in them, which means that you can actually lock it in various positions, which was ridiculous because I wanted to lock it at top dead center so I could set the timing. And the constant noise of dogs barking around this poxy neighborhood is doing my head in as well. Anyway. Um, yeah, so, right, back to the old drawing board. I'm gonna come up with another solution here. I'm gonna find top dead center the old way, and I'm gonna make sure I have it accurate. That's all I can do. So my plan is to get, uh, to remove one of the glow plugs here on number one cylinder, and then basically just find a dead spot. And, yeah, it's not the way I wanted to do the job, but if it works, it works. So. 10 millimeter socket. I see, I know I'm close to the mark, I just, I'm not on the mark yet. And we can do the pump timing through the VCDS system, so at least to be able to do that. All right, so there's our glow plug out. All right, so now that allows us to, let me just get the glow, glow plug wiring out of the way, there we go. So now I need to get some sort of a long rod to go down in there and um, yeah, I need to get myself set up. So I'm going to have a think about what I need here. I'll come back to you in a minute. All right, so it seems crude, but I think it'll actually work. So what I have here is I have a magnet, okay? And the magnet is stuck here, okay? And then on the other side here, I have an Allen key going down into the cylinder. So what I'm doing is I'm rotating the engine so that the Allen key is at the top of its stroke and uh, i'm gonna make a mark at that point okay so i'll know then when it's at the top uh there's uh, i i have a piece of um masking tape on the other side of the uh magnet here to write on so i can make a mark and when i uh when i see this piston going back down what we need to do is we need to find a dead spot which will be about four degrees so we need to actually turn it so that it's in the middle of that dead spot and then we need to mark the crankshaft and um yeah basically that's it so it's um not as scientific as i was hoping to be but hopefully it'll be close enough okay so we have top dead center um i wanted to make sure i spent plenty of time trying to get it right so i know that's 100 percent there now because not only is the allen key lined up perfectly with the highest point on the piece of masking tape basically i just use the allen key to kind of scratch a line on the masking tape if you know what i mean so that's fine okay but if you come down here you will see on the pulley there actually is essentially a timing mark now you'll see the blue mark is the, is the one i made there okay but if you look where the bolt is coming out there there was a bolt in that hole already it's basically a blanking bolt and that is to do with the timing so far as i understand anyway but the actual the original um t crankshaft locking tool goes between there and there and then just goes down into a kind of a recess down there okay but that point there is exactly uh is exactly top dead center so now i know in the future if i'm ever doing this again i can come back to that but in order to remove parallax error as well i kind of did a couple of measurements there just to make sure that the tooth that was lined up was exactly lined up with that bolt and sure enough it did correspond with the uh, top dead center mark okay so now 
Now that we know we can come back to that, go back to that mark easily, let's have a look and see how far out our camshaft is. Disappointingly, our camshaft timing is absolutely perfect. I was, uh, I was hoping it wasn't, to be honest with you. But no, it definitely is. I'm actually using the spanner as a straight edge, but I did actually check it to make sure. So the shank of the spanner there is just sitting nicely. And it's actually exactly the right thickness to go into the slot in the the slot in the uh, end of the camshaft. So we don't need to do anything with that. That's uh, it's a shame because I was hoping that that was what was causing a problem, but it's not. So anyway, we know our camshaft timing is right. So the next thing to do is injection pump timing. So basically the problem I had up until this point was that I couldn't get the engine up to operating temperature. Essentially what was happening was it was saying to me that the, um, the engine needs to be at least 80, at, at least 80 degrees in order for the, um, in order for the, uh, uh, in order for you to do the pump timing. Okay, so I could never get the engine coolant up to 80 degrees. It just wouldn't do it. The highest it would ever go is 60 degrees. So I had to kind of just set the set the pump timing while it was at 60 degrees. I don't know if that makes a massive difference or not, but what I'm going to do is, now that the belt is off the water pump, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start the engine and I'm going to monitor the temperature. And when it's up over 80 degrees, and it will get over 80 degrees when there's no water pump, we will uh, we'll do it again, but at least I can put the uh, rocker cover back on, the cam cover back on, put the glow plug back in, and um, yeah, we can uh, it, it, like we have our top dead center mark, but technically we don't need it because we're going to do everything now through VCDS. So let's get set up for that. All right, so obviously it's ticking over all right there now, but um, if you have a look, the coolant isn't up to temperature yet, and it's saying that the timing for the pump is spot on, right? It should be on the blue line. That yellow bit should be on the blue line, the intersection. Okay, so it's there now, but it's saying the engine's not warm enough. So what I need to do is I need to get it up to 80 degrees. Now, just uh, for your information, after I have this job done, I'm going to change the thermostat. So don't start lighting up the comments saying you need to change the thermostat. I have a new one for it. I just want to get this done first of all, and then I'll get into that. That's another day's work. But, uh, and then I obviously have to sort out the exhaust as well. But um, yeah, I mean, the exhaust isn't on it there now. It's not especially loud. I mean, yeah, it's loud. It's loud because it's an old diesel engine, but. Anyway, right, let's wait until the engine heats up. Now there is something interesting. I'm just looking there at the bottom left of the graph. Fuel temperature 109. Well, that's not right. I wonder, is that a problem? Anyway, let's get the timing sorted out first and then we can investigate that afterwards. Okay, maybe not. 31.5 degrees in a hot fuel pump. That's probably about right. I and mean, it's getting a bit heat soaked now. You can see the cooling temperature is getting up. It's about 63.9 there now. Um, fueling 2 milligrams per stroke. I had set that to 4. I wonder will that come good again now afterwards. I might need to reset that again. But, uh, yeah, strange it's down that low. Anyway, we'll keep waiting. Okay, so I'm just having a little look here at the numbers, right? We're nearly at 80 degrees, okay? But math specifies 250 milligrams per stroke and actual is 522 there at the moment, right? So I would suggest there's something wrong with the math sensor, which is great for one altogether. Uh, barometric and manifold is fine. Specified map and actual map are fine. Fuel temp is a bit high as well and the injection quantity needs looking at. So there's a few numbers here that just don't seem to make sense. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the timing sorted out first of all, and then we're going to revisit some of that and see what we can get right by, uh, well, I'll, I'll do the hammer mod on the pump to get the injection quantity up to around four. And uh, once we have that right, then we should be able to kind of uh, get it, uh, well, we'll see how everything else is looking. But the uh, mass airflow could be causing a problem there for us, and so could the fuel temperature. Could be a cumulative thing of a number of uh, factors that are causing problems. All right, so it's just up to, it's gone up to 80 degrees now, so that should say uh, allow us to go into our um, uh, pump timing. So we go into measurement blocks, go, switch to basic settings, TDI timing, and select our engine type, okay? So it's uh, AFN, AHU, and 1Z. 
and it's still alright like. Okay, so our pump and cam timing are fine, there's nothing wrong with them whatsoever, alright? Well, I, although it's still saying engine ECT, uh, engine cooling temperature not warm enough. What the hell is it expecting like? We'll wait a little bit more and see what it says. Fuel temperature still, I don't know why it's saying 119. Alright, we'll go back and see what the cooling temperature is now. Alright, so there we go. Timing within spec, dead on. Right, that's all I want to see, okay? So our timing is fine. Alright, so I have the hammer mod done now and I have the injection quantity at 4.2 to 4.4, so that's a hell of a lot better. Okay, so I've done a bit of Googling and basically what I'm looking from what I'm reading, that is an issue, that mass sensor, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna rev the engine now and I'm gonna see if the mass goes up to about 800, 850, which apparently it should. By the way, I have no EGR valve on this engine, so that's not a, it's not entering into the equation, right? So let's see how we get on. Does that answer your question? Because it answers mine. I've got a dead mass sensor. Right, I'm gonna change that and see how we get on. Okay, so where am I with all of this? Okay, so I've done a bit of reading and uh, asked a couple of questions on various Facebook groups and stuff like that. And what it would seem is that because I have no EG or valve, the math is actually, about, the math figure for math actual is actually about right. I don't know what the hell is causing the problem. I mean, all I know is that the engine's down on power and it's drinking diesel. It's doing at best 30 miles to the gallon and not a 60 is abysmal, it's about 25 seconds. Yeah, it'll do 120 kilometers an hour on a motorway. It won't sustain it. As soon as you hit a motorway hill or anything like that, it'll drop down again. And um, you know, it's a heavy enough vehicle, but it's 1.9 tons. You know, I would have thought that there was enough power in this engine to be able to keep this moving reasonably all right. <coughs> so I think I'm gonna have to keep going and trying to find uh, try to look elsewhere for the problem because unfortunately I don't think that uh, math is the smoking gun I was looking for. Math sensor is about 120 quid and 120 quid to maybe fix a problem just seems to be quite expensive to me now. Um, I might decide to do that. I might try it. I might chance it and see but um, yeah anyway look. Well it's just as well I had the bucket there isn't it? All right, all right, I'm doing it now. Jesus, stop nagging me. Right, we'll get the thermostat done, and at least that way then I'll be finished that bit, at that end of things. That's the old one on the left. It says 87 degrees on it, and the one on the right says 87 degrees as well. So, I don't know. Um, anyway, I might just throw the old one in a pot of water and see if it opens too early or something like that. But definitely the engine was not getting anywhere near 87 degrees with the uh, water pump turning in any way, shape, or form. So that would suggest to me that there was other... Uh, uh, that the thermostat was stuck open or something like that so anyway right we'll um we'll pop the new one in and hopefully that will cure the problem okay so it's time to take this out for a drive and see how uh, how our numbers are looking on the trend monitoring on the laptop on the back seat so uh yeah a bit of a cloud of smoke there off it but uh, we'll go through the estate because there's a few god it's hot uh Sounds kind of fruity because there's no exhaust on it, but so what I want to try and do is bring it out onto the motorway and see how see how it's actually operating there. You know, just get a get a kind of a get the taps opened up on it, get the EGT up a bit. So I'm recording the mass air pressure, mass air flow. Um, what else am I measuring? Uh, coolant temperature. I want to see the coolant temperature get up to about 80, 85 degrees. So at least I know that the new thermostat is working. Uh, I don't want it to overheat either for that matter because uh, that would be bad. The, uh, it's definitely got a different tone to it without the exhaust, but I don't like it only because of the gobshites around this area to drive around in their diesel Passats and Boras with stupid exhausts and 
going boo and they, they all call each other lads I don't want any part of that so there will be definitely an exhaust going back onto this I can assure you Okay, so I'm coming up on a roundabout here and then there's a good straight stretch of road where so long as there isn't some, a lot of people dawdling on it I should be able to accelerate like the hammers of hell and see how uh, see how it pulls and then actually get an idea as to what sort of numbers we're, we're getting See, it's fine in se first, second and third gear when you get into third and fourth or sorry fourth and fifth and also the smoke it's pumping out is unnatural so let's labor it now it's in fifth gear i want to work it now what i'm seeing straight away is the temperature is getting up to where it should be now so that's great that's what i want to see Yeah, I'm getting a chance now, just that my, my foot's flat to the floor in fifth gear. And you can see what I mean, it's just not accelerating, it's kind of very gradually doing its thing and it's pumping out smoke in the process. I mean, you should be able to do better than that, like. First, second and third is tolerable, but that also goes down to the thing, uh, the other side of it as well, where the fuel economy is unacceptable. And that to me is just because of the fact that I'm labouring the engine the whole time. I'm, you know, I'm having to drive it flat out. You know, you, you, you can't just pootle around with it or kind of drive a part throttle. If you, if you want to keep it on the, on the move, on the motorway, you have to drive it like, a, like you stole it. Well, yeah, basically. temperature is right up in the middle there now so that's kind of where I wanted to see it so I have never seen this engine actually having its temperature up there before so that's great so I'm going to go on to the motorway here now and we're going to get up to 120 kilometers an hour and I'm like just touching a hundred and there's a hundred and five now fl flat to the floor like you see what I mean there's no point in me going near uh, fifth gear yet, but I will now okay so there's fifth right and okay it's all right but again fuel economy is the other side of it Jeez, I, also need, I think I may have lost the balance weight in the wheels as well. If you haven't seen my video, by the way, on doing the uh, uh, modification where you put polyurethane bushes on the steering rack on one of these, you really need to do that job. It makes such a difference. Like here I am doing 110k on a motorway and aside from a bit of wheel wobble from probably wheel balancing issues, it's grand. I'm happy now the temperature is staying exactly where it should, under load. I suppose the frustration I have really with this is anything that I'm getting from this engine and gearbox combination I could have gotten from a stock gearbox and a um, an AAZ engine with some with only some very small trade-offs yeah okay I wouldn't be doing 120k as often but I could still do 120k if I wanted to the power was still there with the AAZ you know it was okay and it was geared to deal with a power, with a 1.6 turbo diesel engine so if anything it was a bit more a bit quicker off the mark and lower gears so that's kind of why I'm disappointed with the engine and gearbox uh, in this. Like, in all honesty, I am disappointed. It was not worth the effort. It just wasn't. Until I can get the power out of it and the performance, you should you should have two of three things out of it. You're looking for reliability, cheap cost, or power. 
right? So you can cho choose two of the three things, okay? So you can have power and reliability, but it won't be cheap. You can have power and it'll be cheap, but it won't be reliable. But I don't have any of those three. That's the thing about it, right? So that's, that's kind of why it annoys me. You know, I don't trust the engine because I've added complexity. It's not powerful and it wasn't cheap. So where's the benefit? That's what I'm asking people here. We're nearly back now. Um, good uh, 20 minute round trip there, which is grand. Uh, engine temperature, absolutely perfect. So at least that's a big win. Um, it's smack bang in the middle of the gauge. So uh, yeah, we're definitely, um, our thermostat is doing its thing now. So obviously it was the thermostat in the old uh, setup that was, uh, or it was the old thermostat that was causing the problem. So great, happy days. Um, at least that's one thing. And yeah, that will it, that will have some sort of an effect on the fuel economy. You know, I mean, it, an engine that's not getting up to operating temperature isn't um, it isn't able to uh, deliver its best performance. They're just they're designed to operate within a, in a certain envelope. And uh, if it's not operate within that envelope, you don't get the performance you're looking for. All right, let's see what we're dealing with here. I remember to leave the engine running. Thank God. The log file didn't save. So, you know what, VCDS is a real pain in the ass with stuff like this, you know, it should make it easy, you know, that you could just save it. Anyway, look, I'll, I might have a look and see if it's, uh, see if there is a log file here, hang on. No, there's not. Of course there's not, sure, why would there be? Um, I'll try and do it again and just do it, <sighs> right. Okay, I brought it out for another quick spin just through the estate anyway, just to kind of get an idea as to whether or not everything's all right. So let's have a look. So I don't have it in the graph. I'm gonna actually, so that's stop, right? Um, yeah, okay, so it has made a log this time. So it didn't bother its arse the last time. So yeah, okay, right, so if I close that, and open the log. Hey! All right. You minimize. Some page is a page of numbers. All right, so. I feel a, I feel an Excel graph coming on. So, actual, Manifold absolute pressure is going up to about 1.7 bar on full boost So that's grand. So let's see math actual right. So let's see what we're getting here. Yeah, it's hit 784 there when it was on let's See yeah, 847 Yeah, uh, yeah, you see we're getting the kind of a range there which we'd expect to see okay, so it's not our math sensor either injection quantity Hit a peak of about 35, 35.4 I think it is. And then kind of back down to 3.2. So it's it's within the within the range you'd expect. Okay, so turbo's working, the math is working, the uh, fuel temperature apparently isn't causing a problem, and um, timing is fine. I don't know. I'm absolutely stumped. Maybe it's just a shit engine. So, you know what? <sighs> Answers on a postcard, please. As I said, I went back to basics to try and find out what the hell is going on. And short of getting down the route of doing compression tests or pulling the cylinder head off. And I am strongly considering doing that and just making sure that it's there's not something stupid going on. Like a, a valve that's not sealing properly or it's gummed up a gack and I didn't get all the gack out of it before. So I suppose we'll have to look at that. But anyway, look, I'm going to leave it there, folks. So thanks very much for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll keep you updated with my progress. Or if I have an epiphany or anything else like that, I will um, I'll let you know. So, yeah, chat to you soon. Thanks for watching.